Welcome to Sprinkle of Hope podcast with your host, Jason. We have an awesome guest with us, Simone Canego. Um, she is awesome. She uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and has done a, a lot of really cool things in her life. Also, she's adopted three kids from other countries, um, and she is just amazing. So we are so excited to welcome her to our show. Thanks so much for having me here today. Yeah, so... Uh, Simone, could you kind of give just a little bit more background to kind of who you are, what you do, uh, just a you know brief synopsis on yourself? Yeah, so so right now, who I am, <laughs> I've done a lot of I've done a lot of things in my life, but I am an author. My book, The Extraordinary Unordinary You, came out in October, and I'm a motivational speaker, and I'm a mom of six. So, and I've been married for 28 years. So put all those four together, and that's pretty exciting for me. <laughs> That's awesome. So what got you into motivational speaking? Why did you want to take this route in life? It's funny because I would have never said this was something I wanted to do. Like I probably used to be scared to get up in front of people and speak. I struggled for a long time to figure out what I wanted, who I was. And I think because I am, I always call myself an ordinary girl. I think it's really important for me to share my messages. And every time I get up in front of a group and I feel that if I've connected with that one person that I've, if I've impacted that one person, then I've done my job. So for me, it's motivation to get back up there each time to share my stories. That's really awesome. And, and I love the, the title of your book, the extraordinary unordinary you. Can you kind of talk about that and kind of what you what you mean by it and kind of what your message is? Yeah, I, I think that's all of us. I think that we, I call myself an ordinary girl, but we are all unordinary. We are all unique. And within us, we have these extraordinary pieces and these extraordinary moments. We just have to realize what we're capable of. And so that's kind of how I started thinking about the book and, you know, how, how do I, how do I wind all my stories together. And really my underlying message is that we don't need to change who we are. We need to change the way we see ourselves because we all are unique and we all have amazing things that we bring to the world. I really, really love that. I think it's awesome that we're your message is that we don't have to change who we are. We should be who we are. Yeah. Um, but in, in your case and in our case, we're opening our, our mouths and sharing our message and who we are to the world. And I think that sometimes scares people, um, but it's, it is important to share what we've gone through and those lessons that we've learned. So um, share with us something that you've learned in your journey that really has motivated you to open your mouth. Really that we shouldn't label ourselves. We shouldn't label anybody else. We really should realize that, um, if we want to accomplish something, we set a goal and we put the work behind it. You can't let anybody else tell you like, you can't do this. Yes, you can. If this is something that you really want and you're willing to put in the work behind it, you can do it. And I didn't realize that about myself for a very long time. And I'm married to an amazing man. I have great kids, but these were the pressures I was putting on myself starting when I was a teenager, not feeling comfortable with myself. And that just kind of spiraled into saying, well, oh, you couldn't do that in our house. Now we don't use the word can't because can't means won't. It means you won't even try. So that's not even part of our vocabulary. We're like, okay, rephrase it. Words matter. If, yeah. if you want to do it, put the work in. Yeah. I love that. I love that thought. And, and I was just, you know, looking over, you know, some of the information in your, in your site and you say, change the way you see yourself and the world around you will change. So, so what do you mean by that? And kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. It goes back to really how we don't need to change who we are. We changing the way our, we see ourselves. So when, when we realize what we're capable of, when we really take a look at ourselves and understand that the little things we do every day impact the people around us, positively, that's the goal is that we want to impact people in a positive way. I think we enter our, our days differently. You know, I start my day with a, a positive af affirmation every day. There's got to be something that I like about myself or like about my day every day there is. And I don't, I'm not going to talk for everybody, but I think that everybody can say there's one thing I like about myself today, whether it's my eyes, my eyebrows, doesn't matter. It's one thing. Um, but 
you know, really seeing when I approach my day with positivity and I, I don't focus on, oh, you know, you ate that donut last night and you shouldn't have eaten that. I, I don't, I don't think about that stuff anymore. Right. Like I, I really think about, okay, what, how am I going forward in my world? And when I go forward with positivity, let me tell you, it spreads to other people. I definitely see, I see it in my kids. I see it in my husband. I see it in the people that I talk to. I was just at the grocery store and I always like to strike up a conversation because I think it's really important to acknowledge other people. And those are big things that we bring to the world. When we stop for a second and have a conversation with a stranger, those are important things. Yeah, that totally reminded me of a, a few years ago, I was in New York City on the subway with my family. And I, I love talking to people, just like you said, and just struck up a conversation with this guy. And later my wife's like, why do you do that? And I said, because I, I want to, I want to be a difference in the world. No matter, like you were saying, if it's one person, then that's worth it to me. And if I can make that person smile or feel like, yeah, there is good in the world, then it was worth it. And so I, I, I completely agree with you there. So talk to us a little bit about your journey up this mountain, up this yeah. big, huge mountain. Like that's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And, but it was amazing because if you would have asked me, so this was six years ago, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, do you think you'll ever climb a mountain? I'm like, I, I get winded climbing the stairs. Okay. Like, <laughs> so, um, it was a big deal. But my husband was the one who was originally asked to do it. His friend had climbed it the year before. It was raising funds and awareness for the Live Strong Foundation with a group called Survivor Summit. So there were, we had um, cancer survivors on the trip, people that were climbing in honor of someone. And so they asked my husband and he was like, no, thank you. Call Simone. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they did. And I said, absolutely. And then I thought, do I even know what I'm getting myself into? No. <laughs> and then I did a little research and said, okay, I, my balcony, my patio is 12 feet above sea level and the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro is 19,341 feet. So I got a lot of work to do here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's so, part of it. You know? Yeah. How did you, how did you prepare yourself for that? And is there any correlations back to just life in general? Oh yeah. I think there, there's, so many uh, correlations. So, you know, really, I when I made the commitment, I said, okay, I, ha I have to get in shape. Like if I want to do this, which is what I want to do, then I have to put in the work so that I have the best chance of success. And so I was at the gym every day and I would put the treadmill on maximum incline. Um, I wore, yeah, cause that's about as good as it gets here. We have, we have uh, one bridge that you can go over and I would do that like you know, eight miles of a bridge, which was really exciting. And then we have a trash dump that was converted into a park. And that's a little hill. Again, I used to get winded walking up that and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, 40 feet. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I used to wear, the other thing I did was I wore this elevation training mask and um, it basically looks like Bane uh, from Batman mm. and it goes over your face and it has these little valves that you can adjust to it doesn't ha have anything to do with oxygen, right? It's just about lung capacity. So building your lung capacity. So when I, I think the maximum adjustment I could do was to, it was kind of like 18,000 feet, something like that. Maybe it was 15,000, but it built, it built my lung capacity. I mean, I'm sucking wind when I'm trying to walk with it. And so I think that was really helpful, but when you get to, the higher altitudes, your, your body has to do that conversion where it's okay accepting less oxygen. And, and that's the hard part. You don't know until you get there. Yeah. So how long did it take you to hike the, hike the mountain? It was five days up, two days down. And we went, uh, we went a, a longer route, which I think was great because we all, we all summited it. And I think that some of the shorter routes, your body doesn't have time to adjust to, the oxygen deprivation. So it, it was, and honestly, it was beautiful. You got to see so much as we went through the different climate zones, you know, you start in the tropical rainforest and you end up in the glacier, right? So there, there were so many cool parts about it. And I was gone for about two weeks though. I had the flight is a day. Um, and then I 
took a couple of days before and then we stayed a couple of days after because once you get down from the mountain, like you can't walk, or at least I couldn't. I was like, okay, <laughs> I need a little rest before I go home to to jump right back into six kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> That's um, awesome. And so yeah. um going back to kind of some of those life mm-hmm. lessons that you learned, you know, from climbing this mountain, was was there some of those that you'd like to to share with us? Yeah. See, I started talking so much. No, I you're forgot good. like the second part of the question. <laughs> no problem. It happens. Um, yeah. I mean, really the one foot in front of the other. So I wasn't trying to race up the mountain. And I think sometimes we, we, we go through life from point A to point B and we forget that that space in between A and B is the really important part of every journey. And so that was a, a moment for me of really looking at that one foot in front of the other, slow, steady pace. I'm not trying to beat anybody. This is a challenge for myself. And I think that correlates with so many things in life is that we don't need to run through anything. We don't need to rush through anything. We need to enjoy the journey and enjoy those moments, even the struggles, because it makes us stronger. It makes us better. And it makes us realize what we are capable of. The other thing was, I mean, there's lots of lessons, but sure. you know, I was, I was, so first of all, I didn't know anybody on this trip. So there were 16 of us. And so not only, okay, I don't know how they like their coffee, but I don't know how they work. I mean, this is, you know, where leadership on a mountain is a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. And not only are, am I, am I climbing with these people? I now have a tent mate, someone that I had never met before. So I'm now sharing a tent with, um, this woman, her name is Rhonda. She's a breast cancer survivor and she was amazing. And it was such an inspiration for me. And again, one of those reminders of how important it is to have these conversations, to learn as much as you can from somebody because everybody has so much to teach. And the last thing I will say is that when I got to the summit, the the realization of every moment in time got me to that. So looking at all of the struggles that I had, looking at all of the people that said to me, you really think you're going to make it to the top? And I thought, oh no, I'm doing the challenge just so I don't make it, you know? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for asking that question. Um, but, you know, really looking at that and, and saying, I don't need to put labels on myself. I don't need, you know, and if someone wants to label me, that's their issue, but I don't need to put labels on myself because if I, if I commit to something and I put in the work behind it, I truly believe in myself. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I would imagine that at some point before you started climbing, you saw this big, huge mountain and thought, wow, that's way up there. But you went back to the taking one step at a time. And it's those simple actions that allow us to get to our goals um, often. And sometimes it's fear that holds us back from even taking that step. So as a motivational speaker, um, are you able to do certain things right now or are you adjusting to that or, you know, what, what's Simone working on now and going forward? I'm everything is virtual right now, but we'll see, uh, hopefully in the fall, what, what things will become, but you know, we're really fortunate that we have this, right. Imagine if we were at a time when we didn't have, you know, a, a way to see people's faces or, I mean, obviously we still can talk, but you know, there's even before then, right. So like to, to be in a situation where we can still connect this way, because for me, the human connection is the most important thing and being able to hear about people's lives and hear about their stories and share my story, because everybody has a story. Sometimes they don't realize it. And really one of, I feel like my job is to share my stories that will help motivate other people to be willing to share theirs. Because sometimes it is a scary thing to put yourself out there and you are like, oh, are people going to judge me? You know what? Some people will, no matter what you do. I mean, I believe that people are, people are truly kind and deep down, truly kind and that people want to help and they want to listen. And so that's kind of how I go forward with everything I do. Yeah. I love that that that's, that's kind of your whole message, right? Is that we all have the story that you, you, we all are unordinary and we all have something to give, whether that's through the struggles that we went through or the, the great times, right? I mean, either way, we have something that could help somebody else. And I think that when we unify as 
humans together, then we can accomplish great things such as climbing a, a this humongous mountain, um, which, is, which, I mean, you know, Mount Kilimanjaro is like in the middle of, there's nothing really around it. There's no mountain ranges or, or anything like that. So it's, it's, you know, I, I think that there's a lot to be said for each one of us helping each other uh, through this life. And so, um, do you have maybe some tips or anything like that about, you know, helping people get through those fears and getting past those, you know, looking at a mountain and saying, well, that's, there's just no way. Yeah. First of all, we all have a Kilimanjaro. We all have something that we want to do. It doesn't have to be Kilimanjaro. Yeah. I'll have people say to me, oh, I could never do that. Well, do you want to do that? No, I would never want to do that. Okay, well, then change the narrative. It's not that you can't do it. It's that you don't want to. And that's fine. Like you really, you have one life. You should really be doing things that you want to be doing. Um, but also the way we talk about ourselves, the way we talk to ourselves, I think sometimes we don't even realize it. I remember when a period of time where I was a stay at home mom and I was always trying to justify, I use the word just justify that I was staying home to raise my kids and raising good humans is like one of the most important things, the most important thing we can do to bring, bring up the next generation to be kind, empathetic, caring, care about the world. But I would find myself saying, oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mom, or I'm just Rob's wife, or I'm, I'm not just anything. These are pieces that make up who I am, and I need to be proud of them. So I think when I changed the way I talk to myself, and also realizing that when it, changing the way that I talked about myself, and then realizing the way I talk to myself, sometimes I didn't realize that my kids weren't, it's not what I said to them. It was what I was saying to myself. So mm -hmm. things like I joke about the donut, but like, oh, you know, I, I I'm not going to eat that donut because it's just way too many calories or it's too, you know, I'm, I'm, I've gained so much weight. I'm not going to. And then do you think my kid's going to eat it after that? Even if she wanted it, like, I just put it in her head that, you know, this is a bad thing to do just because I'm talking negatively about myself and I've had my kids say to me, why are you so hard on yourself? And that was kind of a moment where I said, wow, I didn't even realize I was doing this. And so important to see that, you know, everybody around us is they're sponges. They hear what we say. And it's so important to talk to ourselves. I do talk to myself. I call it mirror moments. The same thing about starting my day with positivity, that it's so important to realize that people are listening and if that's how you really feel, we need to change the narrative. We need to switch it around because we are all, we all have extraordinary pieces within us. Yeah. I, I think this, your, your insight has been amazing. I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. I think often we're too hard, hard on ourselves and, and we might not even realize that negative um, energy that we're putting out, especially to our kids. But in your case, you know, kids can teach us so many things if, if we're willing to listen to them. And so I, I have really enjoyed your insight. I think, I think you're Thank amazing, you. Simone. <laughs> Thanks. My, um, and when we talk about how kids absorb what, we, um, what we're saying, I was at a drive through with my daughter and I was trying to be in the right space because the drive through was full. So, and I wanted to make sure people would be able to get around me. And of course, as soon as the drive through opens up a little bit, someone goes around me and jumps into the drive through. And I, I got really frustrated and I was like, I can't believe it. And I'm going off. Like I'm literally going off. And my daughter's like, she starts laughing. She's like, mom, I think you need to reread your book. <laughs> <laughs> right. She's like, isn't it all supposed to be about patience and understanding? Remember mom, like we don't know what's going on in this person's life. So we can't, we can't judge anybody. We don't know what's going on. Like maybe she didn't even notice you were waiting or maybe she's having a bad day and she really just needed that cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And then, and then of course we get up to pay and the person who had cut us off paid for our drinks and so then my daughter said, can we pay for the, can we pay for the people behind us? And, and then it was a whole conversation of, I wonder how long this will continue for. So yes, what we say is so important. How we say it is so important and words matter. 
out of the mouth of babes, right? Yeah, always, <laughs> always. Like they are completely honest. <laughs> yeah, they are completely honest. So Simone, we've kind of come to a point where we call it the double down dose. And so we asked two questions. Um, and so we, we came up with this acronym a little a while ago, uh, hope, because we're sprinkled with hope, uh, H O P E heart overcome passion and enough. And so I, I want to ask you, what, is, what do you think being enough is, or what, what is, you know, what would you look at that self-worth, you know, somebody knowing that they're enough in the world and can give back to the world, whatever they have. So I actually like to say that we are more than enough because I think that we have so many things that we bring to the world and you got to take a look at yourself and see the things that you're already doing. You're cooking dinners for your families. Like that's love. You're, you're taking care of your children or you're talking to strangers. As you walk around, you're asking about people's lives, those things that you're already doing. Um, to me, that is more than enough. Love it. I love that. So the second part of double down dose, um, really ties into who we are, I think as, Jason and I, uh, we talk a lot about hope. So Simone, how would you define hope? Hmm, that's a good one. Hope is for me, hope is something that is our, is, is our now is our future and that our kids will look at what we're doing today and they won't have to hope for to continue repairing the world. They're going to look at the world and say, wow, because our parents hoped for this or that, that our world is a better place. It's awesome. We love asking these questions because I think often we don't think about those. It could be even a simple um, meaning, but um, it, it always, you can always see, that our guests really take a second to think, Oh, what do I really think about hope? Um, Cause I think sometimes we don't think about that. So we love asking these questions. Simone. I'll be thinking about it later too. Cause I'm yeah. like, yep. I could I definitely bet you add will. more to that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet you <laughs> will. It's good. It's, it's really making me think. I'm like, Hmm, I have not thought about it like that. Okay. Yeah. We That's love good. to think on those other lay- layers. I think yeah. often we, we don't go, deeper on, on levels. And so Simone, thank you so much for your time. This has been a fantastic discussion. Best wishes to you and your family in the near future. And uh, we'll look forward to more great things from you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Simone. And I, I really do appreciate, you know, your definitions. And I think oftentimes we, you know, Shane and I have talked a lot about hope and, and what that is. And, and it, yeah, some people may not look at it as a strategy and, you know, but it's, it's, it's so uh, needed in our world. We need hope. We need to have more of it. And so I, I just, I appreciate your words today. It's, they've been really insightful. Thank you. I really appreciate it as well. I really enjoyed this.